Welcome back to the smartest year ever. How you doing today? I haven't seen you since yesterday. Good to see you again. If I haven't ever seen you before, please subscribe and like, because I do this every single day. This is our quest to become the world's greatest conversationalist. My name is Gordy, and I was just wondering, how do they measure Mount Everest? And how do they know it's like the tallest before modern technology? Like there wasn't Google Earth to show you all the mountains or some technology to, to measure the height. Like how, did they, how are they so confident in the 1800s that Mount Everest was the one, was him? <laughs> how, did, how did that happen? I just finished Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. It's just a haunting, intense, just amazing book. Freaking engaging. Highly recommend it if you haven't read it or if you haven't read it in a while. Like It's been like 20 years for me and I just reread it. Amazing. Um, highly recommend it. Got me all thinking Everest. Because you've heard of Mount Everest, right? You know, it's the tallest mountain in the world. It's towering over 29,000 feet above sea level. But how did we know that in the first place? And how did they measure it without computers? That's what I'm going to get into today. So let's rewind back to the mid-1800s when we didn't have GPS, satellites, or fancy modern technology. Uh, the mountain had been known to the local people for centuries. But to the British Raj, which is the British colonial government in India, Everest was just another big peak with no real confirmation that it was the tallest. And here's the fun part. They didn't just like go ahead and climb the mountain to measure it. They used trigonometry. You remember trigonometry. <laughs> no digital maps, no fancy tech. They just pure math, old school surveying techniques. So enter the great trigonometrical survey of India. The great trigonometrical survey of India. What a name. This monumental task kicked off in the 1800s with surveyors like Andrew Wall, the British Surveyor General of India, leading the charge. They used a method called triangulation. So it's essentially creating a giant network of triangles from different points in the landscape with measurements taken from miles away. So here's the gist of how it worked. They would measure angles between various points from a known reference, for example, from a hilltop or a flat plain. And then with those angles and distances, they could use trigonometry to estimate the height of Everest from hundreds of miles away. You probably remember the law of sines and angle, sine, cosine, cotangent. You, you remember that, right? You could, you could calculate Everest. But this is what's really cool. How close were they? So how close were they in the 1850s to actually nailing the height of Mount Everest? Well, their original measurement was 29,002 feet, which is 8,848 meters. And it was pretty dang spot on considering they did not have satellites or laser precision today the official accepted height of everest is 29,031.7 feet only 29 feet different than the estimate mathematical estimate from the 1850s that is insane to me that is insane 29 feet off like yeah i i feel like there's gotta be some margin of error there like ah good job guys but so why didn't they just measure the mountain directly well, have you climbed Mount Everest? <laughs> well, it's complicated, you know. Everest's location in the Himalayas meant that access was treacherous and dangerous, and the weather was incredibly unpredictable, in case you don't know anything about what it's like. Up in Everest in the death zone. Uh, the initial measurements actually came from vantage points hundreds of miles away using just these careful geometric calculations to estimate the height. And one more fun fact for you on my way out the door here. The mountain wasn't even called Mount Everest at first, obviously. It was referred to as Peak 15, Peak XV. The name Mount Everest was later suggested in honor of Sir George Everest, a British surveyor who worked on the surveys in India, even though he never actually saw the mountain. Wow, he got lucky. That's a good mountain to be named after. Um, and as I mentioned, while the British were busy measuring it, the locals had known about Everest for centuries. So let's not act like it didn't exist before these guys saw it and named it. So I thought I'd add those names too, uh, just so it didn't seem like I'm thinking that the mountains just popped up in the 1800s and we're like, British were like, we invented this mountain. This is our mountain. Let's put it in a museum back in London. Uh, the Tibetan name for the mountain was Chomolungma, uh, meaning goddess mother of the world. And in Nepali, it was called Sagarmatha which means forehead in the sky. That one's kind of cool. Um, if anyone can pronounce those better than me, hit me up, let me know what I, how I did. Uh, but so there you have it. The first accurate measurement of Mount Everest was a remarkable feat of math, geography, and sheer determination done long before we had modern technology. The great trigonometrical survey set the foundation for what we know today about Everest with accuracy that's pretty mind-blowing, all things considered. And I, I should have mentioned, I mentioned Andrew Wall, 
but I, there's also another person who like first like claimed that it was taller and I, I feel like I should give him credit. So hold on one second. Yeah, I, I should end with this, give some little credit. In 1852, Everest was actually first named or called the highest peak before they had had an estimate of the calculation or the, the measurement of how tall it was. It was already known to be the tallest in the world. And that was thanks to the work of Indian surveyor, uh, Radhanath Sikdar. Radhanath Sikdar. Um, let me know if that one's right, but just wanted to give credit where credit is due before I give a little more credit to my sources, which can be found in the YouTube description. Please follow, rate, subscribe, comment. I had to mess something up. Let me know if you climbed Mount Everest. Let me know if you, if you felt that it was a different height than that. I would love to know. Um, at Smartest Year Ever Everywhere. Go check out the minute-long version of this. It's a different recording, as I've mentioned. Go check that one out now. And in the meantime, stay curious and stay clever on our quest to become the world's greatest conversationalists. I will see you tomorrow in the smartest year ever.